All her life, my second-born, Callie, had been a mother's dream. Smart as her physicist father, outgoing as her big brother Jack, principled and salt of the earth sensible as my precious mother-in-law, and gorgeously athletic as my mother, who is still a handsome woman at 84, and walks three miles a day, and drives like a New York cabbie in Atlanta traffic. Callie was our perfect daughter. Never in her life had she given us serious cause to worry. But the word perfect can also mean completed. Little did I know that my obedient daughter was saving up all her bad behavior credits to cash them in on one giant bombshell of a boo-boo that would redefine perfect wedding in biblical terms, meaning finished. Thank God it's finally over with. Oh, for a crystal ball. If I could have been absolutely sure my instincts were right, I would have gunny-sacked her to keep her from the altar. As it was, I was the one who got gunny-sacked. The present. Second Tuesday in January, 10.55 a.m., Muskogee Drive, Atlanta. Normally, I love January's sweet, silent stillness after the glittering clutter and excitement of Christmas. Stripped of wretched excess, the only way to decorate for the holidays, my house seems clean and sleek and tranquil. I bask in the New Year's quiet order with a long, relaxing breath and look forward to the high spot in my monthly routine, lunch with my lifelong best friends. For the past 30-something years, since we were pledges in our high school sorority, Linda, Diane, Teeny, and I, and lately Prue, our prodigal, have tended the ties that bind on the second Tuesday of every month at the Swan Coach House Restaurant, where we share laughter, fun, fellowship, frozen fruit salad, and generous doses of poor baby on a scale of one to five, the only allowable response to whining of any kind. When we all started turning 50, we decided to wear red hats and purple in honor of Jenny Joseph's wonderful poem, Warning, a delightful declaration of independence for midlife and beyond. Governed only by our own twelve sacred traditions of friendship, our luncheons have become a welcome refuge of acceptance and sanity, or occasional insanity, none of which was ever my idea in this crazy world. And every month we take turns bringing a joke that's not woman-bashing and preferably not man-bashing either. For the past 30-something years, I've always gotten to the Swan Coach House restaurant early so I could sip my iced tea or hot lemonade in our regular banquette in the back corner of the main dining room and savor the anticipation of seeing my friends. Until that gray morning last January when, for the first time ever, I was seriously considering skipping the whole thing. Disconnecting the phone turning off my cell, taking one of the four sleeping pills I had left from a trip to England five years ago, and pulling the covers up over my head. Not that it would do any good to postpone the inevitable, but I couldn't stand the idea of telling anybody, even my best friends, about the dumb thing my brilliant daughter was about to do. Not until I absolutely had to. If I stayed home and took the sleeping pill, it would knock out my internal chicken little along with me. She'd been dithering away in hyperdrive ever since Callie's New Year's Day announcement. Not that I'm mental or anything, but when it comes to my psyche, I have this constant internal dialogue with pieces of myself that just won't shut up. Chicken little, my drama queen, and my scolding inner Puritan hog up the whole house, relegating my sensible self and creative inner child to the shed out back. 